Hello, thank you very much for being here with us. My name is Javier Perez and I work as a Director of Research and Development for DreamLab Technologies. And I'm Juan Escobar and I work as a Senior Cybersecurity Consultant for DreamLab Technologies. This talk is based in our experience in the field of security audits, incident response, as well as in the research of new vulnerabilities and how they are applied in the ICS cyber kill chain. ICS are devices that generally operate in critical infrastructures. These are not well known since they operate in a different environment compared with companies that have common information technologies. Also, many incidents involving ICS devices and the OT environment have had very important geopolitical connotations, which has changed the world related to the vulnerabilities existing in them, which has led governments to take measures that classify them as a critical element of the nation. As many of you probably know, today we are in what is called Industry 4.0, which is characterized by broad interconnectivity, data collection, analysis, and communication, which results in the optimization of the flow and quality processes. Although the benefits are many, this convergence between the IT and OT worlds increases the attack surface and as well as the number of new controls to implement. Based on this premise is that in the 90s, Theodore Williams, along with members of the Purdue University Consortium, developed the Purdue Enterprise Reference Architecture as a model for enterprise architectures, where the Purdue model defines the different levels of critical infrastructure that are used in production lines and the way to secure them. But as we know, it's very difficult to implement, maintain, and monitor all cybersecurity systems. We must remember that not all companies are the same. Therefore, the security mechanisms and architectures are different. But at the base, the activities to be carried out by an attacker will almost always be the same. That is why Michael, Assant, and Robert Lee adapted the cyber kill change model created by Lockheed Martin to the ICS world to understand, visualize, and organize the steps required for an adversary to reach their goal. So the IC, ICS cyber kill chain consists of two phases, cyber intrusion, preparation and execution is related to the IT world and the ICS attack development and execution is related to the IT world. So in this talk, we will try to emulate the most common vector attacks to get access to a remote uh, power plant. Let's see what these steps are. For the stage one, the first one is reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is an activity to obtain information about something through observation and or other detection methods. This activity is divided in two, passive and active reconnaissance, where the passive is in charge of searching for the information available in public sources and the active interacts directly with the target for the collection information. Okay, let's continue. First, let's define our target and the attacker. In this case, the target is a nuclear power plant called Macros, and the attackers will be a group called APT666. If we search for this nuclear, nuclear plant in Google, we have a result. And we can see that this plant is located in Switzerland. Also has another energy project. Continuing with passive reconnaissance, we can do search in Cholan or Sumai, where probably there is not much information, which always should be the case. In LinkedIn, we find one profile related to the company and not much else in the internet. It, it is when the attackers carry out an active reconnaissance, obviously both activities can be carried out in parallel. As we know, the plan is located in Switzerland, so we proceed to scan the entire country looking for any reference to the company. One of the protocols consulted is SNMP. Although there are not many vulnerabilities for it, it provides information that may be important to carry out an attack. For this purpose, an automated tool is created and launched nationwide, 
using the default community string to perform the authentication. As a result, we can see there is an IP related to the company. So in this tool, we will set uh, the name of the database, the community, and the files with the IPs. So in Switzerland, there is around 20 million IP. So this will take uh, like a couple of hours to finish. But now we can see uh, the, that we have the result related to the Macros electric power plant. So, in this IP address, that was not uh, linked of any site like Shodan or Sumai. We will scan to see what it is in this IP address related to the Macros electric power plant. Now we will see what information this service can give us. For this, we can use several tools, but now we will use one called SNMP check that will give us the data in an orderly way. As we see, it gives us quite a lot of information, but an interesting piece of information corresponds the network connections. Here we can highlight a connection established to port 22. which is generally used for remote administration and we can see that it's accessible. Now we know that someone is connected, so we can assume that it's uh, someone who managed this system. Let's see what we find in this source IP. Uh, we launch a quick scan and see that port 80 is open. We access through the browser and see there is a login page. With a little more research, we see that type of device it is and what part of the world the active is assigned. This is a home router uh, located in the United States. As we take a look and do some research about it and we don't have any vulnerabilities on this device. So as a summary of the first step, we have one LinkedIn account one website, one Linux servers, one SNMP service, one, in, one interesting IP address, and one internet border device with not no vulnerabilities. Next step, the preparation. In this step, there is weaponization and targeting. Both can take place, but this is not required. Basically, this step is to prepare the tools according to identify objective. In this case, we will use two vectors, the social engineering one, and the other we will call it infrastructure. I will go for the social engineering vector is that the victim visit a malicious website and exploit a vulnerability in order to take control of her computer. Our school excuse will be an interview for a magazine specialized in cybersecurity issues in industrial environments. So for this vector, we will create a fake website where we locate our exploit for browser and also we create a fake uh, LinkedIn account uh, for a journalist who is working on this uh, fake uh, magazine called skywire.com okay and now our plan for the vector 2 infrastructure is also similar to the previous one. We want to redirect all the web traffic to our malicious website, but since we don't know who is behind this device, we need to hack the device and change the configuration of the DNS server. So in this way, the traffic can be redirected to our malicious DNS server. So uh, we don't know the password, we have to find a way to enter to this device. So what we're going to do is try to find a vulnerability. So we will try to find our zero day. Uh, what we're going to do is try to pass uh, the parameters of this uh, web application and try to find some kind of uh, remote code execution because these devices 
are common vulnerable to this kind of uh, vulnerabilities. So we will try to pass all these parameters in the post request. So what we did was uh, using a dictionary with a lot of commands in Unix, try to find a way to execute some commands. And we can see in payload 6 and payload 7, we have the answer what we need. So in this moment, we find our world, a remote code execution on this device. So this is a zero day vulnerability. So now in the field keypad, sending a specific request concatenated to the parameter, we have a remote code execution. In this case, we send the command ID to identify who is running the process. In this case, it's a remote code execution um, with root privilege. So now we finish the preparation and weaponization and targeting. Now we go to uh, the next step is cyber intrusion, management, enablement, and sustainment, entrenchment, development, and execution. So basically, uh, this is the moment and we can add. So can we deliberately explore, install or modify uh, to gain access to the system of the victim? Uh, we launch our command and control uh, using methods such as a connection to previously installed capability or abusive trusted communications such as the VPN. And then we have the sustainment, entrenchment, development, and execution phase. When in this phase, documents a variety of end goals that an adversary may have. In this phase, uh, is when the adversary acts. So we can discover, do lateral movement, everything we know in a common IT uh, attack. So now our first uh, victim will be uh, an operator of the SCADA of the company, Macros Power Plant. And now we will send her a message uh, through LinkedIn so we will uh, put a link of our SCADA wire magazine and now we will try to exploit a vulnerability in her browser. So for this, first we need to activate our exploit on the website. And now we can send the message. So we say a message saying that I'm a journalist for a magazine and if she wants to participate in an interview and we add the link for the website. So now we can see in the LinkedIn profile of the victim, she received uh, the message and she probably links, click the link and she will have access to the website and see there is a normal magazine related to industrial technologies. But in the background, you will see we execute the exploit on the browser and we have immediately access to her machine. So we can start to look for uh, credentials. And also, we can look for interesting files like um, VPN or software like for password management like keypacks for example and also we can start look for some uh, files 
uh, related to the related to the company. Also for the second vector infrastructure, we already find a remote code execution, so we will try to get some information about that device. In this case, we have the credentials of the device, so we will now try to crack it. So now we have the password of the device. So now we can log in in the device. And we're now going to change the DNS server. So now we apply the change. So now we can take a look on the victim machine. And we can see the DNS has changed. So for example, if it goes to gmail.com, So we can see, let's try to connect to Gmail. So any domain he wrote in uh, the Euro bar is, re is redirected to our malicious site. So now we can see we have almost uh, the same information like uh, credentials. Uh, a lot of VPN uh, config files um, and probably more information that we need for uh, prepare the next step for the attack. So as a part of command and control, we are using the same application. Uh, in this case, it's Metasploit. And as uh, we showed previously, we have a lot of information related to uh, the victims. In this case, uh, we have the cred Windows credentials, and we can see this uh, person is working not only for Microselectives, also for another uh, power plant uh, companies. Uh, and we can get, of course, some um, password manager like uh, KeePass, and some sensitive files like uh, uh, details of the infrastructure. So if we take a screenshot of the victim, we can see a system administrator for an external company work for Macros Power Plant. Also, we can um, use keyloggers for have the password for the key pass, and we can see he have the system for uh, almost a lot of uh, sensitive uh, infrastructure like the CM, SCADA, and the Active Directory. So probably this will give us domain admin immediately without any other attack. Also sensitive files, same for Lisa. Uh, Lisa is an uh, operator of the SCADA, so we are interested also in their password management uh, database. So we add a keylogger. Uh, in the attack. So, as a summary, uh, we have uh, access to two important uh, computers, and now we have remote access to the plan uh, with the configured files uh, they have in their computer. Also, we can pivot from their computers too. We have credentials for almost all the infrastructure and the detail of the infrastructure. So, next is the stage two. And I give you um, Juan Escobar the, to explain this part. Thank you, Javier. Um, continue with the IC cyber kill chamber in its second stage, more precisely in the development phase. In this phase, uh, the attacking group tries to create new offensive ab abilities using the information from the previous stage. 
And this is possible because the attackers have discovered a cell document with a list of devices. In this case, we can uh, see a Schneider Electric DLC using the MADDOS protocol. And first, it's necessary to understand the MADDOS protocol. Luckily for us, this protocol is really very simple. We are going into um, too much details. The first seven bytes of the package in red correspond to the header fields. Continue with one byte reserved to the Clareia function. This can be between 1 uh, to 127 in hexadecimal. Finally, uh, we have the data segment. The content of this field will depend on the function code we use. Uh, as you can see, the request is very simple. Uh, this one is a value request using the function code 1 or read coils. And if a request is valid, the response will keep the function a field corresponding to 8 bytes with the same uh, value as the original request. But what happens when the request contains an error? In this case, the response will, to, will return to byte reserved uh, for exception. We have uh, exception function code, which is one byte, and exception code. Uh, the first, the exception function code is equal to the total sum of the value of the function used, uh, one in this case, plus 80 in hexadecimal. So, for example, if the function code in the response uh, will be the value 81, if, you will, if we use the function code 1. And if we use, for example, a function code 2, the response, uh, if the request contains an error, will be uh, 82. And if we use function 3, and, we, and the request contains an error, will be uh, 83, and so on. Uh, the second field, the exception code, is represented by a numerical value uh, that will depend on the following flow. So if our, our request can pass uh, the first condition, illegal function, this means that the function is valid. Uh, in other words, if the exception code is different from one, uh, the function is valid. So based on the error messages, it's possible to determine the existence or the existence of implemented function, and this is very uh, helpful to build better attacks. It's also important to consider that an enabled multiple function is always a possible attack. So with this knowledge, it, it is possible to build a tool that can list the implemented function. The tool sends valid MADBOT frames, always trying to force error messages and list all the possible functions uh, or the attack vector. So to continue our simulation, uh, we or the attackers will focus in, in function 43, which is a read device identification, and also function uh, 90, UMAS, which is an a Schneider electric proprietary uh, function. This function was discovered uh, with a new enumeration tool. So what is a uh, function 43? In short, uh, this is a function that will provide device information. So for example, a vendor name, product code, revision number, etc. Uh, here are some uh, first tests with description function 43. So we can uh, see some information about the PLC and the project. Uh, the other interested uh, function of uh, Snyder Electric Device is the function code 90. Um, among the many functionalities or subfunctions available, we are interested in the following three, uh, uh, 40, uh, 41, and 20. We are a star PLC, a sort PLC, and read memory uh, block. So for the final attack, we are looking for a request that can easily generate a stop on the target device. For which in our controlled environment, requests have been sent to our PLC using only function 19, which are in hexadecimal uh, 5a, but with random data. So finally, it was possible to generate a denial of service condition by sending two null bytes, as you can see uh, here, in the subfunction read a, a memory block. Uh, finally, a tool uh, was developed for this attack, which we call Madbus Killer. 
So uh, the next phase is validation. In the validation phase, uh, the aim is to certify the new ab abilities or development uh, in a controlled environment with a specific hardware. All tests have been performed in a laboratory environment, such as the one uh, we show uh, below. So uh, the following demo evidence uh, denial of service with the Modbus Killer tool. So here we are uh, setting a, a value uh, one for the uh, sli slide ID uh, one using the function called F5 to start the motor. And then we present some banner grammar with the check argument with the model scalar uh, script. This is performing a banner grammar using function 43. And then we are sending uh, the exclude argument. We will use uh, a function umas uh, or function code uh, 90. So we can see that the motor or the device is stopped when we send the, the two null bytes. So as you all observe, the resulting denial of service to off all the PLC functionalities and also disconnect it from the network, forcing a physical restart. And the final phase is called ICS attack. This stage is used to deploying and executing uh, the attack. So we have another video that simulates uh, the final step in, a, in the simulate uh, macros uh, plant, electric plant. So as uh, you can see, we send um, the kill command and the device was unresponsive. So this is a system to control uh, the temperature of, of the weather. And when the PLC stop uh, working, the alarm will be, be activated. And also the temperature will rise. Uh, so just in case these vulnerabilities uh, we, we found have already been reported to the manufacturers and have their respective security patch. And here are some uh, recommendation overview that you can apply to avoid uh, this type of attacks. And finally, uh, thank you very much for uh, your time and do not forget visit us in our ICS research uh, blog and our GitHub uh, where we publish exploits and tools that can help you in your security audits. So thank you.